Is my husband having an affair with his stepsister? My husband 24M and I 24F have been together for several years, but lately, I can't shake the feeling that he's having an affair with his stepsister, Jess 23F. Let me give you some background. My husband's parents divorced when he was 15 and by the time he was 17, his dad remarried. His stepmom brought her daughter, Jess, into the family, and they all lived together for about a year and a half before my husband went off to college. That's where we met during our freshman year. A year later, Jess started attending the same college, and my husband introduced her to our friend group. The dynamic was always more like friends than siblings, since they didn't grow up together. I can't lie, back then, I occasionally felt like Jess was flirting with him. But my husband never responded, so I tried to brush it off as just her personality. I thought I was overreacting. Fast forward to now, we're all back in our hometown and still see each other quite a bit. Jess is single and hasn't had a relationship in years, and she and my husband are still incredibly close. When we're all hanging out, along with their parents, she tends to sit super close to him on the couch, sometimes even resting her head on his shoulder while he shows her videos on his phone. I always thought it was odd, but I pushed those thoughts aside. After all, they're not blood-related, so it felt taboo to think anything serious was going on. But over the last six months, things have definitely started to feel off. Our birthdays are in April, just a week apart, and we usually combine our celebrations. This year, Jess surprised me by giving my husband some really thoughtful gifts, like expensive gaming headphones and a watch, while she completely skipped getting me anything. She even wrote him a long card. When I asked my husband about it later, he casually claimed he must have thrown it out, but the envelope was still sitting there with all the other gifts. I've noticed their texting has ramped up, and Jess seems to be reaching out to me less often, despite us being friends for the past five years. If I suggest hanging out with just her, she always has an excuse, but she's more than happy to come over when it's both of us. My husband has also started visiting her more, telling me he's hanging out with his dad, but I can't shake the feeling that he's really going to see her. Plus, our intimacy has taken a nosedive. We used to be intimate at least twice a week, but now it's dwindled to just a couple of times a month. Then, on July 4th, everything hit a breaking point. We were at my father-in-law's house for a big cookout and pool party. Jess was all over my husband in the pool, playfully hanging on him, splashing him, and acting like they were a couple. I started to feel crazy for thinking it was odd, convincing myself that maybe they really did have a sibling-like bond. But then I caught Jess staring at me when my husband and I were being affectionate, and she looked furious. The final straw came when we all went inside to change. I was in my husband's room, and suddenly without knocking, Jess barged in to ask if she could borrow my hairbrush, while my husband was completely naked. I was horrified and told her she needed to knock. She just shrugged it off and said, Oh, whatever, he's basically like my brother. My husband looked embarrassed, but not as much as I expected him to be. She walked out like it was no big deal and since then, she's barely spoken to me. I'm spiraling, and I don't know what to do. Am I overreacting? I haven't confronted my husband about this yet because I'm terrified of being wrong and accusing him of cheating on me with his stepsister. I just need to know if anyone else sees what I see. Small update, thank you to everyone who has responded. When I made this post I was hoping for validation of my worries, but also scared of that at the same time. I'm trying to keep it together and act normal around him the best I can. Tomorrow he's going over his dad's, as so he says, so I plan to show up there and see what's going on. Another slight update because I know you guys are invested, an update but not really, yes, I did go to his dad's house Saturday. A lot has happened since then and I haven't been on my phone much. When I get time later tonight I will post a full update of what's gone on. I will most likely make a new post about it because it's been hard keeping up with the comments on this one. Bear with me as I get my head sorted out. Comments Silver plated lining If I were in your shoes, I'd ask to look through his text messages. Together with him sitting right next to you, if he'd prefer. Don't explain why. You could offer for him to look through your texts at the same time, if he'd like to. He shouldn't have anything to hide, and he should hand it right over to you. He will have questions and I'd suggest you answer them all honestly, but only after you see his texts. But, his reaction to the suggestion will tell you a lot. If he's angry or tries to say that you're crazy, something is up. If he disappears somewhere with his phone, he's deleting things before he shows you. OP, I'm worried to do it this way, 
because if their texts are totally innocent slash I find nothing, I'll have to tell him why I wanted to see it and I'll seem nuts. He's got an iPhone and a MacBook where his texts are synced up, so I might try to get a hold of his MacBook and read them on my own first. He uses his laptop for work mostly though, and has a password on it, so I'll have to come up with some excuse about needing to borrow it. Appropriate put 7963. Truthfully, I don't know any brother slash sister duo that acts like that. I know siblings can be close, but not that close. Maybe try to investigate more before springing any accusations on your husband? Seems a little odd to me though, yikes. OP, this is what I haven't been sure of because I have siblings, but two sisters, no brothers. Also with step-siblings I have no idea if it's a different dynamic especially, since they didn't live together for very long since they were older. I definitely think I need to actually dig into this to see if I can find legitimate evidence, but I'm honestly scared. Jack Skit. You should tell him you want to see the in-laws and go with next time to capture the disappointment on his face when you say it. I mean like be ready and stop him from pulling out of the drive and hop right in so he has zero time to text anyone. Next be ready to also gauge the disappointment from his sister. All the physical signs will be there should give you the answer you're looking for. NRJJ's VPN. Or op could let him go, and then show up because he, forgot something or because she wanted to bring in-laws something and forgot to send it with him. That way she can see what they're all doing if husband is actually spending time with his dad, which sounds doubtful, or if he's actually just with stepsister, which sounds much more plausible. I'd also like to see the color drain from his face when Op shows up. Ah, uh, imagine if the in-laws aren't even there. I'm so sorry you're going through this, Op, and I hope you get answers soon. Stacy it. When your spider senses start tingling it's often because you feel the undercurrents. My brother and I don't act like that and we are very close and grew up together so you may be onto something. She's not your problem, he is your spouse. Either outright confront him or decide if you want to investigate but you need to find out for your own peace of mind. Update 19 days later. Hey everyone. I hope this message finds you well. First off, I owe you all an apology for my long silence since my last update, which you can still find on my profile. Honestly, the past few weeks have felt like an emotional whirlwind, and I can't even begin to describe how our family has completely unraveled since then. To say that everything has fallen apart would be an understatement. I truly appreciate your understanding and patience during this tumultuous time, and I'm sorry for going quiet on you all. It's been an incredibly challenging experience, and I needed time to process everything that's been happening. To catch you up, I want to give you some context and share the details of what unfolded. I'll be referring to some text messages quite a bit, and I'll paraphrase them where I can to give you a clearer picture. After my last update, I made the decision to go to my husband's dad's house that weekend. He had mentioned he would be there, and I felt a mix of anxiety and determination as I approached the situation. When I arrived, my heart sank as I saw that only my husband's car was parked in the driveway. A sense of dread washed over me. Should I call his dad? Should I try reaching out to my husband? Ultimately, I decided to just walk in because I didn't want to play any games. Taking a deep breath, I pushed the door open and stepped inside only to hear my husband's voice alongside Jess's coming from the kitchen. They sounded like they were having an intense argument, and it sent chills down my spine. Even now, it's hard to recall exactly what they were saying. It felt surreal, like I was watching a scene unfold without sound, my heart pounding in my ears. When my husband finally spotted me, he looked completely taken aback, like a deer caught in headlights. All I could manage to say was, what's going on? The weight of that moment was almost unbearable as I stared at them, my heart racing. Then, my fight-or-flight instinct kicked in. I'm not a confrontational person, so my immediate reaction was to turn around and run. But before I could, he rushed after me, pulling me into a guest room to talk. Once we were inside I pressed him again, asking what was happening. I expressed how strange his behavior had been lately and directly asked if he was cheating on me. The look on his face changed. He appeared shocked by the question, and then, out of nowhere, he broke down in tears. I had never seen him cry before, and it shattered my heart. He insisted he wasn't cheating, but had something heavy to share, something that had been eating away at him. He said he couldn't talk about it there and needed us to go back home. I was desperate for answers, wanting to know everything right then and there, but he was so overwhelmed that he kept begging me to let him explain once we got home. 
Eventually I agree, even though every part of me wanted to demand the truth immediately. We left his car behind and drove home in silence, filled with unspoken tension and his tears echoing in my mind. When we finally arrived home, we sat in the living room, and I could feel the anxiety radiating from both of us. My patience was wearing thin. I turned to him, my voice shaking, and demanded to know what was going on. I could feel my heart racing in my chest, anticipation and dread swirling inside me. That's when he finally let it all spill out. He began to tell me about a traumatic experience from college, specifically during our junior year, when Jess was a sophomore. One night, they had gone to a party together. I wasn't there because I had gone home to visit family, and he ended up getting really drunk. He explained how our guy friends ditched him to hook up with others, and that's when Jess offered him a place to crash on her couch for the night. He recounted how he woke up later, feeling disoriented, with his pants down and Jess on top of him, having sex. His voice trembled as he described the confusion and horror he felt in that moment, waking up to such a devastating reality. That was all he remembered, until he woke up again hours later, finding her asleep in her own bed. He left without saying anything to anyone, completely alone with this traumatic experience. As he shared this, I felt like the ground was crumbling beneath me I was blindsided, struggling to comprehend how he could have kept this to himself for so long. He explained that it took him ages to process what had really happened, and even then he couldn't bring himself to tell anyone. He felt ashamed, embarrassed, and worried that no one would believe him. He was terrified of being labeled as the guy who slept with his stepsister, scared of losing me, and anxious about how it would affect his dad's new marriage. So he decided to act like nothing had happened, even when we were all together with Jess. The silence persisted until a couple of years later when we got engaged after graduation. That's when Jess sent him a text, confessing her love and lamenting that she thought about that night constantly. She expressed that if their parents hadn't married, they could have been together. It was evident that she was obsessed with him. I can't lie, when he first shared all of this, I was overwhelmed with a whirlwind of emotions. I didn't know what to think or believe until I finally saw their text messages. I questioned him, asking why they were still in contact and why he hadn't distanced himself since we got married. He explained that about six months ago, after we announced to our families that we wanted to try for a baby, Jess had reached out to him again. He showed me a screenshot of a message she sent, ranting about how he shouldn't be doing this, saying marriages aren't permanent until a child comes into the picture. She insisted there was still a chance for them to be honest with their family and for him to leave me. My stomach turned at her manipulative words. He responded by saying he loved me and wanted to start a family, insisting he didn't love her that way and asking her to never bring it up again. Her response was chilling. She said that if he didn't love her, then why did he sleep with her? It felt like a blatant attempt to blackmail him. As I read through their messages, my heart sank deeper. It was always Jess reaching out, saying she was thinking of him or wanting to see him. Sometimes he wouldn't reply, while other times he would try to change the subject or simply tell her to stop. He revealed that on the days he said he was hanging out with his dad, it was Jess begging him to come over to see her, threatening to tell her mom everything if he didn't. He would agree to go, but insisted nothing ever happened, claiming their parents were usually around. That day he went there to confront her, to tell her he was done with the manipulation and harassment. That's why they had been arguing. I sat there, absorbing everything he had just shared, feeling completely speechless. I never anticipated hearing any of this. I asked him about our sudden lack of intimacy, noting that we were only being intimate during my fertile window while trying to conceive. He confessed that all of this had taken a mental toll on him, causing him to shut down when it came to sex. He had only been intimate for my sake, but he had struggled to realize the full impact of what Jess had done to him. The weight of his words hit me like a tidal wave, crashing over me. Tears streamed down my face as I felt a mix of betrayal toward Jess and a deep, overwhelming empathy for my husband. I wrapped my arms around him, pulling him into a tight embrace as we both cried together. I told him he had to tell his dad because we couldn't keep associating with her, especially since she lived there. At first he hesitated, worried that his dad wouldn't believe him, and concerned about how it would affect his marriage. I reassured him, saying he had to trust that his dad would support him, and I was genuinely worried about what Jess might do in a panic after their argument. Eventually he agreed to talk to his dad, and said he wanted to do it alone, needing to handle it in his own way. The following weekend he met with his dad and shared everything, showing him the text messages as proof. His dad was visibly shocked, just as I had been, and he was at a loss for words. 
This led to him telling his wife about the situation and making the decision to kick Jess out. However, to my dismay, she didn't believe it. She accused my husband of editing the texts, despite them being right there in the message app with Jess's number attached. Jess exploded, denying everything and claiming he had been the one harassing her. That's when my husband, filled with a mix of anger and determination, threatened to go to the police for harassment if she didn't come clean. This finally pushed Jess into a breakdown, and in a moment of desperation, she admitted to everything. His stepmom was horrified, while his dad was left struggling with disbelief, unsure if he could get past Jess's accusations against my husband. We are currently in this weird limbo phase of the whole family on edge. Jess is still living there, his dad has demanded she leave, and has given her two weeks, instead of kicking her out on the spot, in an attempt to try and salvage the situation with his wife. My husband and I are having lots of talks trying to regroup. We've put trying for a baby on hold as he seeks therapy for this. He still is considering going to the police for the harassment. My heart is broken for him, and also trying to come to terms with the truth, that Jess who I've known for years, would do something like this. I was prepared to uncover an affair, but never this. I'm not sure if there will be any more updates after this, maybe if my husband decides to pursue legal action. I want to say thanks to everybody who pushed for me to dig into my suspicions otherwise this could have gone even further. I don't like to think of what could have happened. I probably left things out so if people have questions I'll try my best to reply to comments. Comments. Abasejed77. Hello you should push your husband to go the legal route this is messed up. OOP. I've told him that he should because she's unstable. It scares me because she seems so totally normal, like this is the biggest shock of my life learning her true behavior. And someone like that is totally unpredictable. He knows he needs to but is trying to mentally prepare and I'm trying to not push him too hard because this has been a lot. Okay lunch 2852. Oh wow. That's so intense. How are you doing with all of this? Way to be there for your husband. And also I'm glad that the truth came out. OP, I'm really hurt and overwhelmed. Her and I were close friends for so long, so I'm really battling how she betrayed him but me too. And I also feel guilty for having this back thought of feeling lied to by him, when I know this wasn't his fault. He was assaulted and essentially stalked by her, so I in no way blame him, just trying to shake the feeling and hoping it fades. First, Alpha 2805. I was thinking the same thing. She raped him. If this was a woman, everyone would have said she should go to the police, especially since she was blackmailing him. He does truly need therapy, and PLZ go to the police. Just in time 92. When I was 15 I was sexually assaulted, raped, by an older woman who was a close friend of my parents. Without rehashing the details, she snuck into my room, she was very drunk, and while I was sleeping proceeded to molest me and I woke up with her on top of me. Frozen I just laid there until it was over. It happened repeated over the next two years, and she just enjoyed almost torturing me with it. Nobody will believe you. You're a giant lad, you could toss me across the room, who's gonna think I forced you? She also threatened to tell my parents that I initiated everything. When you're a young man, this is a crazy mindfuck, you have no ability to differentiate in that moment between sexual pleasure and revulsion, and that makes it infinitely worse. I can tell you from experience that having an orgasm against your will is emotionally devastating. My therapist in my mid-twenties introduced me to a female client of theirs who had a similar experience. She was repeatedly raped by her older sister from the ages of 14 to 17 and her sister would make her orgasm before stopping. This young woman said it was pure revulsion and self-loathing, because you believe that physically you enjoyed it. I feel for your husband. This anguish is very, very real. Tumble downer. She raped him point-blank and is stalking and harassing him. She is a damn criminal and a psycho. Hope she's going to suffer badly, and hope her reality is shattered now that there's open honesty about what she did to him. Seriously, she sounds out of her mind. I had a feeling reading the original Your Husband Held Shame, Loved You, it didn't seem like cheating but it was something, but this is dreadful to learn. She needs to be no contact cut off, I'm so glad it sounds like family is being supportive and caring. I'm so sorry for your husband, and I'm glad you're comforting him as he truly needs and deserves. That's a heavy burden and shame she's forced him to carry and taunted him with. Nick's Shadowspawn I'm so so sorry for your husband. 
he's lucky to have you for a wife, and to have the father he does though, and I'm sure it has been a massive relief having you both have his back. There's a lot of stigma around men who are raped by women. It's so hard for them. My husband was raped as well. It is good your husband is going to go to therapy, it helped mine a lot. That and medications to help with depression and intrusive thoughts. Gentle hugs to both of you. Solid C within a six. If you don't already, install a security system. This woman is infatuated and manipulative. I wouldn't put anything past her.